Welcome back everyone, so in this video I'm going to be breaking down the Rise of Iron trailer and I'm going to be talking a bit more in detail about some of the stuff that we saw in the trailer and maybe pointing out a few things that you may not have noticed and just talking about what some of these things could mean. So first off we get to see Lord Saladin's face for the first time which is pretty cool. As you can see he's wearing this incredible cloak with a fair collar. Although I don't think this means that we're going to get a cloak of our own like this. I believe this is just going to be exclusive to Lord Saladin. As you can see, Saladin is also stood in front of this destroyed wall, so this is the wall of old Russia, however this is in a different section, so we are going to be getting a new patrol area on Earth, but it's a different section of old Russia, and the new area is called the Plaguelands. Now Saladin also has these wolves by his side, now unfortunately it was confirmed in the reveal livestream that these wolves are not going to have any in-game presence, this was only done for the cutscene as Lord Saladin's kind of personal wolf pack. He then lights this fire in order to signal what is on the other side of this wall, and here is where we get a glimpse of the new enemy. Now these are the Fallen Devil Splicers, and I'll talk more about these in detail shortly. Now if you look closely in the background there, there is a mountain, and that mountain is called Fellwinter Peak, and that is where the new social space is going to be set. Now I'm not entirely sure if this new social space is either called the Iron Temple or the Mausoleum because in the reveal livestream they refer to this social space as both the Iron Temple and the Mausoleum, so I'm not too certain on that just yet. Either way, that mountain is where the new social space is going to be set overlooking Old Russia. Next we have something that's really intriguing. So here we have this bridge that leads to this structure that appears to be suspended and it looks as though this structure has been infected by SIVA. Now SIVA is the name of this technological plague that was previously quarantined in this section of old Russia. SIVA had been quarantined by the Iron Lords who sacrificed themselves to do so. This structure also shares a similar theme to Warmind architecture. So this is our first hint that the Warmines are going to be involved in this expansion, and there's also more interesting hints in this trailer which I'll be talking about shortly when we get to it. Here we have a closer shot of this really cool looking walk now stood inside this structure staring at some kind of SIVA infected artifact which appears to be of some importance. As this is a Warmind construct, it gives off the impression that this could maybe be some kind of core. Whatever it is, it appears to be important and has been infected by SIVA. Next we have some very familiar looking corridors. This is Warmind architecture, and as this is in old Russia, this means that Rasputin is going to be involved somehow. There's a few frames where we kind of get a glimpse of what's down this corridor, and as we can see along the ceiling, this place has been infected by SIVA, and there's also the symbol of the Warmind on this pillar to the left. Now this symbol is actually slightly different than Rasputin's symbol, so I wonder if this means that this is a different Warmind. That wouldn't really make much sense lore wise because each planet had their own Warmind, Rasputin being Earth's, so it would be kind of odd if Earth had two Warminds, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to this next shot, we have something really interesting to look at, this giant sphere. So the first thing I'd like to point out about this sphere are these objects protruding from it. If you look closely, they appear to have what look like engines attached to them, so this would mean that this giant sphere was actually built to fly. To me, this giant structure also looks like it was built by humans, it doesn't look alien enough. It actually kind of resembles the giant bulbs that are seen on top of the colony ships throughout old Russia, and it's even got the same colour scheme. So this makes me think that this giant sphere is some kind of golden age technology, and the way that it's angled towards the ground makes me think that it's a crashed ship. Now we actually have some close up screenshots of this giant sphere and recently the Destiny the Game Twitter account made a tweet with this image attached. Prepare your fire team guardians, Destiny Rise of Iron will feature a new 6 player raid. So it seems as though that this giant sphere is where the raid will take place and we also have this screenshot of 6 guardians jumping up towards it. Now you may have also noticed something familiar about the SIVA that the Fallen Devil Splicers are using to augment their bodies. The aesthetic shares similar themes to Warmind, and as we've seen from the hints so far, there's going to be some kind of Warmind involved with the Rise of Iron. You can see closely on the chest piece of this splicer captain, this red cuboid that looks similar to the Warmind technology. So my theory is that either Rasputin or the potentially new unknown Warmind that is located here could be in control of the SIVA and is using it to manipulate the fallen splicers. Now the thing is we don't truly know what the SIVA is, 
All we know so far is that it has been described as a technological plague, but with the hints given so far, there's no doubt that a war mind is somehow involved in all of this, and whatever the source of the Seaver is, is located in that giant sphere, so it's only the raid where we'll discover the true source of this Seaver outbreak. My biggest question about this sphere is, what is its purpose? As I said earlier, it looks like a modified version of the bulbs from the top of the colony ships, but at the center of the entrance, there are these spears, so this kind of gives me the idea that maybe this was some kind of prison. It looks like whoever built this didn't want people leaving or entering. But what's even weirder is the fact that this thing has wings and engines, so it looks like somebody was trying to get this thing to fly. I don't really know how this thing could fly considering its size and how small those wings are, but I have no idea. Maybe it's some kind of golden age technology that allows it to fly. Again, I have no idea, this is just all speculation on my part. Also, going back to this shot for a second, I want to point out something really odd that I noticed. If you look closely, there are these three kind of wisps dotted throughout the area, and there's also three more that are kind of hidden. I have no idea what these could be, I'm guessing they're going to be some kind of game mechanic, but I just wanted to point that out. Moving on, in this next shot we have three guardians approaching the sphere and a boss spawns. Now the fact that the shot only shows three guardians makes me think that this is actually part of a strike and not the raid. Now we also saw this boss in the trailer for the year 3 Yalahorn, and this boss is called the Machinist. So I'm guessing this red kind of warp effect is his spawn animation, and he will get a close look at the boss, as you can see he's replaced some of his limbs with some kind of machinery using the Seaver technology, he's got these red wires running along his body, he's got these red particle effects coming off him, and his mask resembles the exotic hunter helmet, the ATS-8 Arachnid. He's also got this weird kind of crazy looking weapon, which I can't tell if it's attached to his arm or not, and he's also got some other kind of object, or maybe even another weapon on his back. Here it also appears that one of his abilities will be the ability to teleport. If we go back again for a second, we also get a little bit of a closer look at these wisps that we saw earlier, but we still don't know what these are for. My guess is that this is going to be some kind of game mechanic when you fight the boss. Next we get a look at the new enemy that we're going to be facing, called the Fallen Devil Splicers. According to Bungie.net, these splicers belong to every house, we just haven't seen them before, and these particular ones are loyal to the House of Devils, hence the name the Devil Splicers. The splicers are described as body hackers and bioengineers, and you can see that here. These splicers have caused the outbreak of this plague, the Siva, and used it to augment their own bodies, which honestly looks really weird on Dregs. They've now got this kind of peg legs, which kind of looks like you could just sneeze on them and they would fall over. But apart from that, they do look quite menacing, with the red eyes and the red wires running along their bodies. Then next we have what is possibly one of the most badass cutscenes we've seen so far in Destiny. Lord Saladin puts his helmet on, prepares for battle, then out of nowhere summons this giant flaming battle axe and charges at the Fallen with his wolf pack by his side. Now unfortunately this battle axe isn't going to be an exotic weapon like the swords were. This is going to be a special weapon similar to either the Scorch Cannon or the Swords of Crota, which could only be picked up in certain missions or in special public events. So that is a little bit disappointing, but either way, this thing looks insane, I cannot wait to wield this. Moving on now, we get a bit more actual gameplay now, showing off some of the new areas, the new weapons, and the new armour. So here we have a fire team of three guardians ascending this mountain, and this mountain is Felwinter Peak, which, as I mentioned earlier, is where the new social space is going to be set. Now if you look closely on the left there, that is the spawn point, which you can tell by the flag that's there. In case you haven't noticed, every spawn point in patrol spawns you next to one of these flags and so do some of these strikes, so that is how you can tell that this is the spawn location for Felwinter Peak. Then we get a glimpse inside the new social space with a guardian standing here. Now I believe this is a guardian, I don't think that this is actually a vendor because this guardian is wearing the same armour that we saw earlier, and typically vendors have their own unique armour set. Plus the character is standing the same way we do in any social space, so I don't think that this is a vendor. Now this place looks really cool, I can't wait to visit it. In the background there are these statues, and there's more of them that we can't see in this frame, but there are more of them, and these statues were built as tribute to the Iron Lords. There's also these statues of these wolves, which as we've seen from the Iron Banner gear, is a very common theme with the Iron Lords. And there's also this tree on one side of the room, which I believe is supposed to be the Iron Tree. 
Now, there's also a similar group to the Iron Lords called the Iron Wolves, and it's mentioned in the lore that these wolves gathered beneath the Ironwood tree and swore an unbreakable oath. So, I'm wondering if this is that tree. Before we move on, we also learnt from the Reveal livestream that this social space has now been taken over by the Fallen Devil Splicers. So, we're going to have to fight our way up Fell Winter Peak and reclaim this social space before we can access it, which I think is going to be awesome. Next, we get a better look at this Warlock's incredible armour. As you can see, the armour is lined with fur and it's even got a fair collar. They're also wielding some kind of scout rifle, which if you look closely, has this red, yellow and white stripe on it, which makes me think that this could perhaps be a future war cult weapon. We actually got a closer look at this scout rifle from some images released on Bungie.net, which I talked about in closer detail in my previous video. So if you'd like to check that out, as well as a bunch of other weapons and armour that was shown off, there'll be a link on screen and in the description box below. Next, we get a better look at this Titan armour now, and if you look at the shoulder piece, it has the same Warmind symbol that we saw earlier. So this means that this armour is inspired by Warmind architecture, and you can tell that by these smooth, sharp, geometric armour pieces. Now, quite a few people were suggesting that maybe this is raid armour, but I don't think it is. I don't think that Bungie would show raid armour so early on. I think the raid armour is going to look crazier and more SIVA inspired. This just kind of reminds me of the Sparrow Racing League armour. And lastly, we get a close-up of this Hunter armour. Now, this is honestly amazing. I cannot wait to get my hands on this gear. This is actually the new Trials gear, as confirmed by Bungie on the reveal livestream. And you can also tell that it's the Trials gear by the Jackals on the armour. It has a Jackal printed on the chest piece. The shoulder piece is the mould of a Jackal's head. The helmet looks to be inspired by Egyptian masks, and not only does the cape have a jackal printed on the back, it also has the ears of a jackal. This is probably my favourite armour set that has been revealed so far, besides the warlock armour set that we saw earlier. I am honestly in love with this armour set, and I cannot wait to see what the rest of the armour looks like for the other classes. Next, we get some more glimpses of the raid, and this looks insane. It shows six guardians running along the wall of the Cosmodrome, and then jumping off at the end. Next, we have this thing, which appears to be a raid boss, and you face this thing on top of the wall of the Cosmodrome, which is going to be really interesting. Not only are we are fighting on top of the wall, we're going to be facing this giant mechanical beast unlike any boss we've fought before. It's got cannons, flames coming out of it, a giant electrical wrecking ball, and a ram on the front to stop us from getting too close to it and running us down if we do. So, this is definitely going to be an interesting fight. It only shows the Guardians running away from it, so I'm wondering if for part of the fight, you simply have to run away from this thing before being able to do any damage. Now, if you look closely at this shot, there are these two skiffs floating on either side of it, so I'm wondering if they'll be involved in the fight as well, or if they're just there for props. Next, we have a shot of this Warlock wielding a fusion rifle, which appears to be a Vanguard fusion rifle based off the orange and blue colours. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it looked really familiar, and when I went back and watched it again, I realised this is the same area as the Cosmodrome when you start the Devil's Lair Strike. So, I went into the game, into the same area for comparison's sake. You can see there's the same cranes hanging above, behind the wall is the same metal beam, and on the far right is the King's Watch. So, this is definitely the same area. However, there's a few really interesting differences. The first thing I noticed is that this area is now completely covered in snow, whereas the Cosmodrome currently only has patches of snow. So this means that the weather has actually changed, which is kind of cool because this is the first time we've seen any sort of weather change in Destiny. I wonder if this means there'll be snow cycles. It'll be really cool to see dynamic weather introduced. Or if this isn't dynamic weather, I wonder if this means that the entire Cosmodrome will be covered in snow after the expansion releases. There's also a few more differences here. On the right, the Fallen House of Devils banners are no longer there. And on the left, it looks as though this pipe has been cut open. It's got these kind of slash marks where the metal has been heated up and cut in half. And so has the crane above. Another one of the more interesting details here is the direction this warlock is moving. Now, currently in-game, this just leads to a dead end. But if you look, there's actually a huge hangar door there. So it seems that this door is going to open up and there's going to be a whole new section added to the Cosmodrome when this expansion releases. Now, we don't know how big this area will be. I doubt it's going to be very big. I have a feeling this is just going to be used more as a plot device that will be used to lead us into the new story. 
Now we also got another interesting screenshot from slightly inside the building this time and it shows this door has been slashed open as well so it seems that we're going to have to chase whatever has done this and this is how we'll kick off the new storyline. Moving on here we see three guardians on their sparrows in the new patrol area, the Plaguelands. Now this place looks really cool, I can't wait to explore this place. There's this giant fallen outpost in the background with some fallen machinery on the left. This is also the first time we've actually seen any sort of actual fallen base. Usually the fallen are seen lurking inside the ruins of the Golden Age. Here we see that same boss from earlier, the Machinist, and this character is wielding a new Omelon Scout Rifle. Now what's interesting about this weapon is that it's been infused with SIVA technology. Now I'm wondering if this is going to fire differently because if you look closely, this Omelon Scout Rifle doesn't have the liquid cartridge like every other Omelon weapon does. Instead, it's been replaced by the SIVA. So now this weapon has been powered by SIVA, which is kind of interesting. It also has the symbol of the Fallen Devil Splices printed on the side of the gun. Here we have a warlock wielding the Iron Yalahorn. Now I'm sure you've heard, but in case you haven't, the Yalahorn is going to be coming back to year 3, and there's also going to be a new variant called the Iron Yalahorn, which is what the Guardian is wielding right here. If you'd like to learn more about the Iron Yalahorn and how to get the year 3 Yalahorn, there'll be a link on screen and in the description to one of my previous videos. And lastly, we see this Warlock about to wipe out this group of Fallen using the Battle Axe. Now, if we go back a few frames here for a second, you can see a green flash of light between those two rocks on the right. Now, this is a patrol beacon, so this means that this axe is going to be obtainable in patrol. So, my guess is that this is going to be a new public event similar to the Swords of Crota or the Scorch Cannons that will allow us to get this Battle Axe. So there you go, that is everything that I could find in that trailer. I really hope that I pointed out some things that you may not have noticed, and I really do hope that you found this video interesting. This took a lot of time and a lot of effort to put this video together, and just a lot of things to talk about. So if you did enjoy this, please do give it a like, I really do appreciate that. The support on the videos recently has been awesome, I'm really glad to see that you guys are enjoying the content, and I have more stuff on the way soon about the Rise of Iron, and I hope you'll stick around to watch it. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.